Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do a reaction to 15 tips for first time traveler to Japan. This is by japanguide.com. Since I'm planning to travel to Japan this year, so I want to know more about things that I need to be cautious of and things that I need to know before going there so that I don't do any mistake. So I'm planning to know more about it, so I decided to do a reaction to that. I've done a reaction previous to this one. If you haven't seen it, go have a look to it. You may like it. And I'm going to compare the information that he's giving me to the one that I got the last time. So let's get started with this and see how it goes. Japan is an extraordinary country with unique attractions catering to virtually every taste. For those visiting for the first time, however, the wide variety of services and transport options, not to mention the busy stations and language barrier, can make getting around seem a little daunting. With this in mind, we've put together a list of tips. Wait, so do you think we will have the, the thing in English? Ooh, I need to look it up. ...aims to help visitors get the most out of their first trip to Japan. In this video, we'll be focusing on one of the most common routes for first-time visitors, which is to start at Narita Airport, explore Tokyo, and then ride the bullet train to Kyoto and Osaka along the Tokaido Shinkansen. Some of our mm. tips may seem obvious. I'm not... I'm actually going to Tokyo and then going to Osaka and visit Kyoto and then back to Tokyo. So I don't think I need to know more about Narita Airport. But I don't know, maybe I do because I haven't booked the flight, so meaning I haven't found the destination to the flight. But I know we're going to Tokyo first, so let's yes, see. If you've been to Japan before, but hopefully, even experienced tourists will find some of these useful. So, without further ado, we invite you to follow along as we reveal 15 travel tips for first time travelers to Japan. That's Number me. One. Take advantage of Narita Airport's luggage delivery services. Seriously? Upon arriving at Narita Airport, we recommend dropping heavy or large luggage at one of the airport's convenient luggage delivery counters. These reliable and, in our opinion, great value services ship your bags to anywhere in the country, including but not limited to hotels and hostels, airports and private residences. Really? All you have to do is fill in the address of where you want your luggage to be delivered and then enjoy being bag free. In some cases, it may be a good idea to inform your lodgings ahead of time, especially if staying at smaller establishments. Really? Number two, purchase a data sim or Wi-Fi. That's okay. That's that's interesting. Maybe we will do that, but it depends what time of day we arrive there. Because if we arrive in like in the middle of the day, like let's say around. 1 p.m. or something like that. We may want to go around visiting the area before going back to hotels. But if we arrive late at night, like around 8 p.m. or something like that, we will go straight to the hotels. So there is no point. So it depends what time of the day we arrive there, if we're not too tired as well. Ruta before leaving the airport. One of the first things many visitors wish to figure out upon arriving in a foreign country is how to get connected to the internet. True. Two common ways to do this in Japan are either with a domestic data SIM card for your smartphone or with a portable Wi-Fi router that can be shared for those traveling in a group. One of the most convenient places to find Ooh, these is at the that. airport, where there are numerous shops offering mobile data options. It's possible with some of these companies to book over the internet in advance and then simply pick up your router or SIM card in the terminal upon arrival. Number three, buy... Okay, with the SIM card, do you think if we... I think we use more internet than actually call because I'm not calling anyone. Why would I call? So I don't see the point of me using like SIM card because I don't need a number. And plus, if I want to call my family, I mostly call them on WhatsApp. So, if I have the internet, I can call them. So, I think we will go for the Wi-Fi and the card, the things, then actually the SIM card. But I want to know the difference, like, what benefit would I get from the um, SIM card compared to the other one? card. In order to make traveling around Japan as smooth as possible, we recommend purchasing an IC card right away at the beginning of your Japan journey. Okay, These cards can be used to ride most modes of transport in virtually all major metropolitan areas across the country and are chargeable at ticket machines as well as at convenience stores. What's more, IC cards can be used as a cashless payment option at a large number of shops and restaurants nationwide, okay. especially in and around train stations. 
The cards can be purchased easily from the ticket machines at Narita Airport's train station with instructions available in English. At the end of your trip, you can return your IC card for a small refund, so be sure to buy your IC card and oh. avoid the inconvenience of having to buy paper tickets for every train journey. Number four, okay, don't forget to pick do up your rail pass. Train travel is the most common form of public transportation in Japan, and rail passes such as the Japan Rail Pass and others can, depending on your itinerary, make traveling significantly cheaper and more convenient for you if you're a foreign visitor. Really? For those who purchased a rail pass before coming to Japan, the JRE's travel service centers located in the basements of Terminal 1 or Terminal 2 of Narita Airport are the first place where you can pick up your pass upon landing. Huh. Number five get from Narita Airport to Central Tokyo. There are a number of ways to get from Narita Airport to Central Tokyo, and the best option depends on two things, where in Tokyo you're going to, and your budget. For those willing to spend a little more to arrive in Central Tokyo faster, the JR Narita Express and Keisei Skyliner both provide quick oh, ways to cool. get to Central Tokyo by train, making the direct journey to Tokyo Station and Nippori Station respectively before stopping at other major downtown stations. Slower, cheaper train options include the regular Keisei Limited Express trains. There are also two main types of bus from Narita Airport to Tokyo. The expensive airport limousines, which stop at a number of stations and hotels in central Tokyo, and cheaper discount shuttle buses, which connect to fewer places. Taxis can also be used to reach central Tokyo, but bear in mind that this is by far the most expensive option. Oh, Number no six, taxi then. Find the best type of accommodation in Tokyo. Tokyo is an extremely diverse metropolis, and this is reflected in the multitude of accommodation options available to visitors to Japan's capital. Of course, there are the usual range of hotels to suit all budgets and other accommodation types that one would expect to find in any major city. However, Tokyo also contains a variety of unique mm. options. When it comes to Tokyo Hotel, the thing I noticed is that they don't sell it by, like, where the room is facing, like, if it's facing, like, a nice view, or the admin what you get in the room they're charging by the size of the room so if they have like a small room and then one person is there they would double it and and put the price for it so that if you're if you are sharing with someone else so technically you pay for two people for one bedroom so it's like it's the size of the room they charge it for, not the actual thing, which is confusing. But at the same time, it makes sense because there's very it, there's a lot of people in Japan, so the room is very, very important for them. So depending of where you get, what room you get, it can be expensive. The travelers may want to take advantage of, including capsule hotels, quality hostels, internet cafes, and historic yet affordable traditional real camp. Oh wait, capsule I thought that mostly was for the um what's called office people that normally would go for those type of thing. But I want to try. We already talked about it on the last video, so there's that. Internet cafes. An internet cafe. I want to try one. But at the same time, ooh, I really want to try one. Because I think I may read some manga in there. Internet cafe. Interesting. I need to take a note of that. An historic yet affordable traditional real can. Number seven. Buy Shinkansen tickets via a smartphone app. In order what? to save time at the station, it can be a good idea to purchase Shinkansen tickets ahead of time What's using a the Smart ticket? X app, which is available in English and boasts a user-friendly Is that interface. for the trains? In order to take advantage of Smart X, follow these steps. 1. Purchase an IC card. 2. Install the app. 3. Register your credit card. Okay. 4. Connect your IC card to the app by inputting the ID number on the card. Five, book your Shinkansen. I still want Six, to know what's that. I think I'm going to look it up. Use the associated IC card to tap through the ticket gates at any Shinkansen station between Tokyo and Hakata. And don't forget ah, to pick up the ticket that comes out the, the other side. Bear in mind that there are various seat types available on a Shinkansen, including reserved and non-reserved and the more luxurious seats in the green car. Number eight. Navigate Tokyo Station. Tokyo Ooh, Station is large and can be confusing even for those who use it regularly. Upon arriving, follow signs for the Tokaido Shinkansen and then enter the ticket gates. 
From here, there will be more signage helping you locate the correct platform and line up at the right car number. Okay. For those who don't have a ticket yet, they can be purchased before entering the Shinkansen gate at either a ticket machine or from the ticket counter. Number nine, purchase an Ekiben before boarding the I Shinkansen. Will. Before boarding the Shinkansen, we recommend making the most out of Tokyo Station's good quality food options and purchasing an Ekiben from one of the shops or kiosks that can be found around the station or even on train platforms. Ekiben, short for Ekibento, or station food box, are a popular meal in Japan for those on the go. They are typically comprised of regional or seasonal specialty foods and presented in a decorative box oh, just thinking or about a platter. It. Delicious and generally good quality, Ekiben vary station to station and are great to enjoy during your cross-country travels. Number 10. Storing bags and luggage on the Shinkansen. If you have luggage, one of the biggest concerns is where to store it on the train. Thankfully, the Shinkansen have space for suitcases and bags in several locations throughout the car. Smaller bags like backpacks and day bags can be stored on the overhead shelves. And there is also a larger space behind the last row of seats in each car. Oh. Number 11. Using the toilets on Shinkansen and in train stations. I don't think so. Japan is known as one of the most hygiene conscious countries in the world. And this certainly extends not only to the restrooms within train stations, but also on the Shinkansen, all of which are free of charge. This means that you don't have to worry if you miss your chance to freshen up before boarding. Shinkansen restrooms are clean and located between every couple of cars, so locating them once aboard is quick and easy. Number 12. Take advantage of the Tokaido Shinkansen selection of amenities. Okay. Bullet trains boast a selection of amenities that make traveling on them comfortable and convenient. For example, if your mobile device's battery is about to die, many seats have power outlets nearby. In case you get hungry, there are also food carts that intermittently make the rounds of the cars from which snacks and drinks from coffee to beer can be purchased for reasonable Oh, that's so like cute! Number 13. Enjoy a view of Mount Fuji from the Shinkansen. Oh. Many passengers don't realize that on a clear day, Mount Fuji can be seen from aboard the Tokaido Shinkansen. The oh. window seat on the side that faces Mount Fuji, seat E, or seat D in green class, is where the best unobstructed views can be had of Japan's most famous natural Ooh, icon. Ooh, I need to take notes so on make that. make sure while making seat reservations to reserve seat E if possible. If you happen not to be able to sit in this coveted spot, it is also possible to see Mount Fuji by standing between the cars and looking out of the window there. Number 14. Ooh. What to do with your luggage upon arriving at your destination. Many major train stations boast luggage storage and delivery services. And for those who didn't get their luggage delivered from Narita Airport, now might be a good time to have large or inconvenient baggage delivered quickly and easily to your hotel. Alternatively, for those continuing on to immediately do a side trip before returning, there are various luggage storage facilities, including oh. coin lockers, which in many major stations are compatible with IC cards. Number Neat. 15, I actually, know how to get it. You I actually prefer that. That's actually nice. Like you make it convenient for people to move around. So you don't have like your luggage with you when you go around looking at places or you don't have to hurry to go to the hotels and all that kind of stuff. Which is nice to know that you, there's like a place where you can put your luggage for that. And also the thing is I found out about the card meaning that we need to get it so i had to look into it and then register it and you can get a refund for that that's just cool i need to take note of all of this your money the first opportunity to access your money upon landing is at the currency exchange facilities in the arrival lobby of airports after that many banks and convenience stores across japan have atms However, it can be hit or miss if these machines accept your specific international card. Fortunately, oh. all post offices nationwide, even in remote areas, as well as all 7-Elevens and many other convenience stores have ATMs that are compatible with foreign cards. Of course, Do there are an endless number of other tips, but hopefully these 15 enable you to get more out of your first Do trip to Japan. Okay, so about the money. Because I know that Japan is still um, a cash-based country, even though they have so many high-tech um, stuff, what is it? High-tech equipment, devices, all the kind of stuff, they're still a cash-based country. Even though they do take cards and stuff like that. So, there is place that I know you may visit that will need cash. So, 
do I need to do it here or over there? And if I do over there, would I be able to get the money? And I still don't know what the money system work. I know it's yen, but it's confusing. But at the same time, I feel like it's easier to pay with card because you don't really know the amount. So you just tap and say, okay, cool, here you go. But if it's with cash, you need to make sure you're given the right amount or you're given the correct amount. And not make them talk because if they talk to you and say, no, that's not correct, you need to add more and you, it's confusing. Anyway, this is the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I actually really did enjoy it. And I think it was fascinating because it gave me more information about things that I wasn't aware of. Or maybe I was aware of but I didn't really take into consideration about it that much. But it was very helpful. I think I'll come back on this video again to um, make a planner around it. Anyway, I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye!